Good evening. Welcome to the State of Business on Art Television with me, Thirantha Gunawardana. Let's take a look at today's top stories first. The visa fee exemption program will recover the loss incurred in the tourist sector, says Tourism Minister. Excise Department introduces a foolproof sticker on imported liquor. And now news in detail. Minister of Tourism, Wildlife and Christian Religious Affairs John Amaratunga claims that the loss incurred in the tourist sector after the Easter Sunday terror attacks can be regained for a better extent if the visa fee exemption program goes well. The minister made these remarks addressing the media personnel at Temple Trees this morning announcing the official inauguration of the visa fee exemption program in Sri Lanka. Last year, income derived from tourism was $4.5 billion. This year, maybe less, but with this, this uh, process, rupees. it will yes. increase. Now, uh, what we feel is that by this, if the tourist numbers goes up, we will be able to go all about all what the losses that you are talking of. And second thing, this is be valid for six months. We are trying to assess and see how beneficial this is going to be. So this is the uh, scenario. That's how the cabinet has given approval. Also speaking during the event, Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe asserts that all traditional festivals such as the Asala Perahari in Kandy, the annual chariot festival of the Hindus and the three main festivals of the Catholic churches at Telvatta, Thalavila and Madhu will take place in the months of August and September since the country has returned to normalcy along with tight security measures following these Sunday terror attacks. Now our intention is that we are satisfied that security is returning to normalcy to encourage tourism. In the month of August and September, we will be holding all traditional festivals. The Dalada Perhara in Kandy and the connector, there are a number of other Buddhist Perharas which take place from Mahiyangana to Devinuara and other parts of the country. Secondly, the number of Hindu festivals where the whale chariot is taken in Jaffna and in Colombo. And thirdly, the three main festivals of the Catholic Church at Tevatta, at Talavila and at Madhu. So we are taking all security precautions to ensure this is held. And uh, I could tell you that Sri Lanka is on its way back to normalcy. So we are also now focusing on the revival of tourism. As you know, many measures have been taken, the visas have been, the requirements have been lifted. President Maithi Parasirisena states that state-owned banks should be strengthened at all times and the state banks should not be privatized. The President also appreciated the services rendered by the state-owned institutions in creating revenue for the government, even at difficult times. The head of state made these statements at the 80th anniversary celebrations of the Bank of Ceylon, held at the BMICH in Colombo yesterday. <laughs> Pasuki Aurudu, Tieka, Tispaka, Hatali, Katawa, Merate, Saman, Pudu Janatawata, Vishal, Barak with Taitani Ayat, Namut Adayam Laban Ayat, Mama, Magi Desapan, Jivite Tula, Magi Pratipatia, Eat Adat Hetat, Raj Banku, Shakti Mati to Ikeneka, Lanka Banku, Raj Banku, Kidir Shakti Mati to Ikeneka, Kishi Shetma, Poudili Karnea, Novi to Ikeneka, Magi Pratipatia Sahadas. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe stressed that the Sri Lankan economy has improved over the last four years, accounting for an 80% increase in public savings. Premier Vikramasinghe made these comments during the 80th anniversary celebrations of the Bank of Ceylon held yesterday at the BMICH. Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe went on to say that the number of public savings deposited in Bank of Ceylon in 2015 was around 800 to 900 million rupees and that amount has grown up to around 1,500 billion rupees as of 2019. Premier Vikramasinghe also highlighted that the Sri Lankan government is striving to make the country the second biggest economy in the Indian Ocean and he mentioned that the banking sector plays a crucial role in aspiring this ambitious goal by developing worldwide market through international transactions. Moreover, Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe also added that the government is planning to purchase samurai bonds 
for the first time. Meanwhile, addressing a ceremony to distribute appointment letters to graduates in the state sector, Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe yesterday mentioned that Sri Lanka needs to leverage on sectors such as information technology in order to compete with other booming Asian countries such as Bangladesh and Vietnam. He also emphasized that the state sector workers should be prepared to face massive changes in an emerging world. The excise department prohibits the sale of all brands of imported liquor without the new foolproof sticker introduced recently. Hence, possession, transportation, storing and selling of imported liquor without the sticker affixed on containers of foreign liquor will be considered illegal. Accordingly, the excise notice number 4 of 2019, published as an extraordinary gazette by Finance Minister Mangala Samaravira under the excise ordinance, was in force since July 20th. This new regulation will be helpful to prevent the smuggling of foreign liquor to the country, and the new measures will also hold the sale of substandard and adulterated liquor to customers. Moreover, the first phase of this regulation implemented on imported liquor will be extended to foreign liquor manufactured here and local liquor soon. Thereby, all kinds of liquor, local or foreign, should have the newly introduced special sticker by the excise department. 23 institutions import liquor to Sri Lanka and they should have the foolproof sticker on imported stocks of foreign liquor before releasing to the market. The two firms which import liquor for the duty-free shops at the airport should also have this special sticker pasted on the bottles of liquor before they are cleared from the customs bonded warehouses. Time for us to slip in for a short break. Do stay tuned for more news after this. Come back. The finance ministry reiterates that the ministry does not charge any money for its role in facilitating small and medium level entrepreneurs from receiving loans via the Enterprise Sri Lanka program. The finance ministry issuing a statement to the media says that the ministry has information that a racket is taking place to bribe money from loan applicants exploiting the letterhead of the Ministry of Finance. The Ministry of Finance announced that it received reports that several organized groups of fraudsters exploited the letterhead of the ministry to send letters to loan applicants and institutions who had applied for loans under the government's Enterprise Sri Lanka saying that their loans were approved. According to this scam, a group of fraudster groups said to have informed the unsuspected Enterprise Sri Lanka loan applicants that their loans were approved and requested them to pay a certain percentage of the expected loan in order to release the loan in full. Finance Ministry further said that under the Enterprise Sri Lanka loan scheme, the Ministry does only the registration of the loan applications and the loans are granted by state or private commercial banks. Therefore, the Ministry requests the general public to negotiate only with the permanent staff that are serving in the premises of the respective commercial banks with regard to obtaining loans under Enterprise Sri Lanka and not to divulge details to any third parties. In more developments, the Public Distribution and Economic Reforms Non-Cabinet Minister Dr. Harsha De Silva states that rice prices are stable and that the government has provided loans to mill owners to reopen their businesses while increasing the competitiveness in the rice industry. Minister De Silva made these claims addressing the media at the Government Information Department yesterday. Non-Cabinet Minister Dr. Harsh De Silva says that the government reduced rice prices by rendering small and medium mill owners no interest loans with an allocation of 1 billion rupees. Dr. De Silva further added that the prices of rice have stabilized, ensuring the competitiveness in the market. Clarifying on the benefits of the Shakti loan scheme, Minister said that the price of Nadu is sold at 80 rupees per kilo and Samba at 85 to 95 rupees per kilo. 
Under the Shakti scheme, the ministry is giving an interest-free loan to mill owners in eight districts including Anuradhapura, Hambantota, Polonnaruwa, Kurunagala and Ampara on a government allocation of 1 billion rupees. Minister also added that the program facilitated mill owners and farmers since the cooperatives were established and funds were given by the banks directly to mill owners and farmers so that they get numerous benefits and the scheme directly supported both consumers and farmers by upholding the market at a balanced level. The U.S. Ambassador to Sri Lanka, Elena Tiplitz, stresses that expanding the relationship between the United States and Sri Lanka from mere donor and recipient to equal partners having a win-win situation is highly essential. The U.S. Ambassador made these statements at the third annual general meeting of the Sri Lanka-USA Business Council that took place in Colombo last evening. I think, though, now that we are a quarter of a way through the 21st century, it's time to work on expanding our partnership in a different direction, beyond that of a donor and a recipient, uh, toward that of uh, equal partners. And as ambassador, strengthening the commercial ties between our nations is among my top priorities. I think that's the direction that we need to head in. And the United States believes that the strong and inclusive economic growth Strong and inclusive economic growth we hope to see globally and hope to see in Sri Lanka is essential, in fact, here in this country. It is essential for the defense of Sri Lankan sovereignty and to the advancement of peace and reconciliation on the island. And inclusive growth is also essential to the future prosperity of the Sri Lankan people. Also speaking at the event, the Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ravinath Arisingh, explained how the Ministry has taken measures to assist small and medium enterprises in Sri Lanka in reaching the international market. While not trying to go at the big elements of this trade, because the garment sector is, the large garment industries are well entrenched in the US, you know the products. Our emphasis has been to help the SMEs in particular try to reach out in the U.S. market. And to this end, we have been participating in the U.S. Apparel Buyers uh, Exhibition in January 2019. And this is something which is done in cooperation with Jeff. And uh, we have participated last year, and uh, it'll be, we'll be doing so the next year as well. Also in Los Angeles, we've had B2B meetings where we'll be organizing uh, in October 2019 to do the very much on the same lines. It's time for us to slip in for another short commercial break. Do stay tuned for Stockwatch after this. Welcome back. Trading at the Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today. The All Share Price Index dropped 16.41 points to close at 5,935.34 and the SNPSL 20 dropped 41.54 points to close at 2,983.45. Turnover was 1 billion rupees and 38 million shares were traded. And up next are the Forex trades. With that, we come to the end of today's bulletin. Tune in tomorrow at the same time for more of the very latest on state of business. Until then, take care.